Hello, everybody, and welcome to Scene Time with me, Emma T. When I say Emma, you say T. Emma T. T. Emma T. T. <laughs> and I have a wonderful guest with me today who will introduce themselves to you now. Um, uh, Don Slovin, would you like to meet Don Slovin? Yeah, <laughs> well, hi, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Don, everyone. Uh, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> Don. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonderful. So um, today uh, on Scene Time, we're going to do like a, a wonderful uh, tribute for our, our dear friend Martin, who we did Martin, both. Martin. We did um, uh, the the oyster, his format, which is a character uh, monologue followed by a, a scene, and then a character monologue again. Um, and thank you so much for joining me for this, Don. Uh, we're going to get a word from Canigeta dot com as our inspiration. And that word is hobby. 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 Great. Oh. Oh, hi. Um, I, I, I'm um, welcoming my workshop here. I, I collect bees. I don't, um, I used to connect, collect mosquitoes, but the mosquitoes kept biting me. So now I collect bees and they sting every once in a while, which is different than getting bit bees. But what's really, I, I like about bees is that I, I get to, to kind of eavesdrop on them. And there's like the mother bee, or what do they call that? There's, there's, there's the queen bee and all of the queen bee's followers. And I'm not talking about Beyonce. And they just kind of look at you and they kind of, you look at them and you kind of go like, no, I am the master of your destiny because you're just a bee and you're in a weird cage kind of a thing. And then when they go to sleep, I go in there and I steal their honey. Those are bees. The other thing I like about bees is that they remind me of my mother. My mother was certainly the queen bee around the house. That's for sure. She she just would, you know, putter and putter and putter. And yet she was the one who always made the decisions. But dad never knew it because he thought that he was actually making the decisions when the truth is she had made all the decisions. That's my mom. I love bees. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, it, it's Mrs. Uh, Jensen, the, the, your neighbour. Uh, oh, I, uh, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I, I, I've just come over to, to borrow something sweet to put in my tea. Um, perhaps some sugar or a, a honey, oh, maybe? Oh. Um, uh, uh, well, sure. I think I got a bottle of stevia back here in the kitchen. Oh, thank you. Move, move out of, move out of the way. <laughs> oh, move what, a, what an absolute cute cat! <laughs> move, move out of the, move out of the way. I, I need to get the stevia. I'm sorry, he's right on top of the bottle of stevia. I don't. I'm very afraid of him. Actually, he's, he's a very scary, scary cat. Oh, oh, oh look how. Oh my god. Oh, don't attack me. Oh. Don't. Oh no. Oh. Oh, oh no! Don't attack me! Oh no! Oh, oh! Save me from this wild beast! Oh, oh. oh you too! You're me. so playful! Oh, oh, oh! That was. Uh, thank you. Oh, oh! You're so funny and playful. I've, I've just moved into the area. I guess you haven't. Ah, welcome to the neighborhood. It's yeah. it's a lovely neighborhood. You're going to find yourself right at home. Uh, you, you know, the reason I asked for honey is because I I overheard that you had bees. Ah. Uh, well, they're, they're sort of illegal, so... Um, oh. Or bzz, actually. Uh, but... But um, 
sure. We, uh, but don't tell anyone. But yeah, come on in. I'll, I'll show you around. Thank you. So uh, that that there is where we keep keep the bees. Oh. And I'm doing an experiment to see how long it is that they live in a jar. Oh. A sealed jar. A sealed jar. I, that doesn't mm -hmm. sound. Well, I, I guess bees are resilient animals, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, that they actually are, you know. It's so funny. I've got friends of mine who do improv oh. and they they like pretend like, you know, uh, thousands of years from now that we're all going to look like robots and aliens and robots and stuff. No, we're not. We're going to be conquered by bees and cockroaches. Oh, well, I've definitely heard of cockroaches surviving any uh, disasters. Uh, it would be wonderful if bees would, would to survive too. Uh, well, that's why I'm doing the experiment. But at, at this point, I think that the bees are sort of losing. Oh, 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 dear. They're such sweet, sweet, sweet insects, aren't they? I love the way that they, they have one queen bee and they all obey her the way that well, I'd like to be obeyed. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm oh. giving away. Too, I'm giving away too much. I, I, oh wow! I'm sorry, kinky just stuff. Just met you. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, Do you have like a dungeon at your home or something like that? Huh? Do you have like, a, oh. have like chains and stuff? Whether you would tie me up if you went to a post and have me kind of hanging there for a while? Oh, you are so okay. funny. Please. please Please let me down. Please. <laughs> oh, I'll play along. Go on then. There you go. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. Oh, no, no. I, I, I didn't quite mean like that. What I meant is. I'm sorry. I, I got stuck in my own, my own apparatus. <laughs> Oh, just, do you know I find you absolutely adorable? I, I'm sorry. I, I oh probably... no, and, and you, 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 me too. Oh, oh, I just uh, 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 sweet. Is there is there a Mister? Uh, I don't know your name. You? Oh, oh no, <laughs> surname Johnson, and no. I'm oh, Johnson. That's right. Not. I'm afraid. Is not. there a? a... A Mrs. Johnson? No, no, no. I'm I'm all alone. You see, that's why I thought I'd come and make make some connections with my neighbours. And oh, when well. I when I had heard that you had bees, I thought, well, sweet, sweet honey. <laughs> I see what you. But that's actually a very good. I'm I'm. That's a very good line. Oh. Next time I need to meet someone, I'm going to say I'd like to see your bees. <laughs> oh. I'd like to see your bees. I'd like to see your bees too. Well, <laughs> what an adventure, hey? I mean, I'd always been quite lonely. I, <laughs> I just, I didn't really know how to make connections. It's just feeling so awkward, you know. <laughs> but uh, well, today I found the bee of my dreams. <laughs> Oh, sometimes I think, yes, yes, Marjorie, you will become the queen bee in somebody's life. Chance to be worshipped and, well, maybe boss them about a little bit. I mean, not not in that way, just just a little bit. Do you know, it, it's so wonderful. I'm settled in got everything I needed and little did I know I'd find it all right next door and scene and scene <laughs> thank you so great. much Don that was great thank you, thank you Emma T <laughs> I'm, I'm Don D, D, D. D, D with, a, with a D <laughs> when, when I say Don you say D uh, I, I'm ready to make whichever gesture you're. No, 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 I, 
<laughs> I just made a gang sign. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Don, so something I ask all of my guests who uh, come on to the scene, what, what do you love about improv, Don? What do I love about improv? Well, um, hmm. Um, well, not to go through all my bio and stuff, but I've actually been doing this stuff since the 1970s. And the original way that I that it happened was that my English teacher from high school, what do you guys call it over there? Secondary school? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, had turned me on to jazz mm-hmm. and turned me on to theater. And then I went away to college and he kept like calling me up and going like, so when you get finished with college, would you please come down here in Philadelphia and be a real actor if that's what you want to be? And so he kind of kept bugging me and bugging me. So by the time that I got to uh, Philadelphia, um, he uh, it was basically the, the the troop was kind of already on its outs. And uh, it was a Shakespearean troupe. And he said, you know, I really don't want to fire anybody, but what's killing us? What what costs the most, if you will, to be able to do a show? Obviously, it's the sets, costumes, and things like that. So he said, well, we have to figure out some way to, to do this without it costing so much money. So I don't know who came up with the idea, but someone said, well, instead of having a set, just have someone there like if it's a castle for example you'll have somebody standing on stage looking like a castle maybe even to have a sign saying castle <laughs> you know i went oh yeah that's a great idea and then well how are you gonna get, get the castle off of stage well we're not gonna have anyone that we're gonna you know pay to be our our scene movers scenery movers We'll have to strike stuff ourselves. What? We're prima donna actors. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what you have to do. All right. So, okay. So let's put a couple of chairs on stage so it'll be easy to take stuff off. <laughs> so, okay. So we took chairs off stage and all that stuff. And I believe what happened was that we did a show and it was um, a relative success. It was like our first one of these kind of, you know, um, make them ups we used to call them. Actually, that's not what we used to call them. What we used to call them? Plugins. We used to call them plugins. And um, we did a show, and at a, at, we're at the bar afterwards drinking beers and kind of go like, we're great. Oh, we're fantastic. <laughs> and Christopher Applegate the third was the director. He comes over and he says, um, I got good news and bad news. Is what? They love us. Great. They want us to do another hour more because they want to sell more beers. But we don't have any any more material than what was it? Well, do something because they're not going to hire us back tomorrow. So, OK, well, you know what, Joe, you're you're a you're you're a flirt. Why don't you go out there and flirt with the girls? Go, go, go do something. So he goes out and he's like, you know, flirting with the girls and talking with people on stage. And uh, we're in the back kind of going like, I don't know. Why don't we like do some like little sticky kind of. So we're listening to Joe having the conversation with the the girl, whoever it was in the audience. And we go, okay, so let's do a day in her life. Oh, wow. (laughs) So that's what we did. We went over and we ended up saying, okay, so who wants to be what? Okay, so you'll be her father. You'll be the, the boyfriend. You're going to be, okay, and you, you'll be the truck driver, whatever. We went out and did it. So little did we know <laughs> that at the same time that that was going on in Philadelphia with Second Sight Theater Lab, the exact same thing was happening, if you will, in Chicago. And I found out many, many years later about Viola Spolin and Neva Boyd and all, and Paul Sills and all all those all those folks in the Second City and all that stuff. I found out many years ago. And God bless, I just wish that I'd be able to get in touch with Christopher Applegate the third because he seems to be incognito in some form or another. Or maybe he's gone, I don't know to be able to kind of check out all of my facts and figures. But that's the way Second Sight 
theater lab was developed. Oh, that's amazing, Don. Oh. Ain't that something? Yeah. Ain't that something? So, so you know, it's funny because my approach is like, let's do long form. Uh, okay. Well, before there was long form, we used to call it get up on stage and don't go off the stage much. <laughs> Great, great description. Right, right. Yeah, you know, short form. What was short form? I don't know. Short form is you do something which is quick. You get your laugh and you get off the stage, right? Make sure you got to blow off line so you can get off the stage. You know, so the light guy knows how to, et cetera, et cetera. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, that's so I amazing. guess that's what I love about improv. Yeah, it's pretty. And. Um... So um, what else have you been up to recently then, Don? So I just actually did a, um, a metaphysical uh, seminar. And we and I, it, we had, this was the week uh, to do presentations. Mm -hmm. So I said, why don't I want, what I wanted to present was this concept of the intersection between spirit and improv. Oh, wow. And, there's a lot of there's a lot of of, of uh, connections between those two, and so I'm just sort of investigating the concept. The funny thing is, we did something called I I call it the Jam Prof Room, which is basically you you uh, go through a journey, bring bring folks along on a journey, uh, going into a place and uh, some of the items and stuff that are in the place. It's actually uh, based, if you will, on the short form game years ago called Spy Hunter. I'm not sure I know that one. Um, okay, so so basically, you 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 go into a room, right? A manufactured room, and you show some, and you you investigate some of the things while you're in that room. Um, also, a shout out to Michael Gelman who had something called Discovery many years ago where you would sort of look at something and then you would discover something about it. So that's kind of the basis of that stuff. You go into a room, it has a variety of different things. And then the next person comes in and finds something else in that room. And then the next person after that, you know, it's one of these things which, which builds on one another, all that stuff. Right. And each time they find something, as soon as they find something, uh, the alarm goes off. Right. It's, oh, well, the guy's actually a thief. He's a burglar. He's a cat burglar, and he has to hide it. So he hides the item somewhere else. The next person comes in through the window <laughs> or through the door, through the window. And he goes over and he looks, if you will, and tries to find the one item and then finds the item. <laughs> He's got it. He's got the gold. And then what happens? The alarm goes off. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, 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 I'll put it. I'll put it in, underneath the floor, eh, underneath the, this carpet here. You get the idea. That's Spy Hunter. So the idea actually came from that into this idea of uh, the jam prov room. So I just did that with these people who are not improv people. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I have this new concept. I have this new idea. Uh, no offense, but I kind of like to work with people who are not improvisers, <laughs> teach them some of the stuff about improvising and all that, who are more of like the psychic realm or more of something other than improv stuff that want to kind of develop something through those sort of techniques. That's that's my idea as of today. Talk to me tomorrow to be something completely <laughs> Oh, you know, that's amazing. That sounds great, Don. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being my guest today. Um, and it's a great, great to have you on the show. And uh, just wave goodbye. Uh, thank you, everyone at home, for watching. And, and tribute, uh, tribute to Martin also. Tribute to oh, Martin. Oh, yeah. And wonderful tribute to Martin. Thank you, Don.